Welcome, and thank you for taking the time to learn a little about our organization's finance philosophy and strategy. I think you'll find this interesting and timely given the recent challenges that many nonprofits face in the current environment. Music Finance Partners One LLC has been created as a private funding vehicle or source of capital to properly launch and finance the Children's Music Foundation's First Note Music Curriculum. First, a little background. We'll start out by covering some of the typical challenges that most nonprofit organizations face. It's become a regrettable fact of nonprofit life that foundations generally spread their resources, both money and people, too thin. In fact, fundraising diverts management attention from mission-related activities to such an extent that it's become a primary source of burnout and excessive turnover among experienced nonprofit leaders. In the April 2008 Chronicle of Philanthropy, 55% of the philanthropy job listings were categorized as fundraising. The system has led to funders' time horizons being out of sync with those of their grantees, which are trying to build organizations that can sustain programs. Clara Miller, CEO of Nonprofit Finance Fund, observes that nonprofits almost by definition run two businesses, the core, mission-related business, and a second, subsidy business or businesses. As a result, nonprofits are largely focused on fundraising at the expense of executing their programs and mission. McKinsey and Company found that while for-profit companies spend between two and four dollars of every hundred dollars of capital they raise, nonprofits spend between ten and twenty-four dollars to acquire the same one hundred dollars. Foundations and government granters, meanwhile, spend between twelve and nineteen dollars on administration for every hundred dollars they allocate. That means that in the social capital market, the cost of raising capital consumes roughly twenty-two to forty-three percent of the funds raised. A dreadfully inefficient process. And then there are the soft costs, such as obtaining donor lists, sending direct mail, making phone calls, and so on. According to the Stanford Innovation Review, nonprofit chief executives spend between 30 and 60 percent of their time pursuing donations with these soft costs that are unevenly accounted for when calculating true fundraising costs. According to Jim Collins in his best-selling book, Good to Great, he likens great business leaders to great bus drivers, and that it all begins with getting the right people on the bus. Thus, the culture and ultimate ability of management and staff to execute on the Children's Music Foundation's mission and financial plan are directly influenced by how its funds are raised, as this determines the skill sets required and ultimately the organization's culture. It's essential to the foundation's success in both its mission and business model that CMF culture be performance-driven, competitive, with a sense of urgency, be mission and goal-oriented, with results focused on program, not fundraising. In other words, a good year means something other than success at fundraising. In Steve Goldberg's book, Billions of Drops and Millions of Buckets, he calls for more performance-driven philanthropy, where nonprofits are rewarded based on their results in place of the current dysfunction. So for our purposes, it's important to make two key distinctions between revenue and capital and between scale and true systemic or true transformative social impact. It's common practice for nonprofits to use both past and future revenues to pay current expenses. This is not a practice that will advance an organization's mission anywhere near where it can affect true systemic change. Revenue is used for operating the business. These would be recurring expenses, such as those needed for daily operations, costs associated with properly servicing the program, and general and administrative expenses. Capital is non-recurring and used to finance growth, capacity building, and special projects, including program development costs. Achieving scale does not necessarily mean achieving systemic change or true transformational social impact. So first, it's important to understand the difference between the two. We can achieve scale by growing rapidly, by acquiring nearly adopters, and serving several thousand students. At 1% to 2% of the market need, which equates to just under 100,000 K-1 students, we would have achieved scale. But to achieve true systemic growth, we need to cross what Malcolm Gladwell calls the tipping point and be adopted by the mainstream market, serving at least 10% of the market, which translates closer to 1 million students in the case of the Children's Music Foundation. We knew there had to be a better way, so we created Music Finance Partners One LLC. CMF will rely on a diverse source of revenue made up of program fees or fees for service, grants, revenue from various events, individual gifts, government sources, and program-related investments, or PRIs, which is what we'll focus on today. 
Each of these funding sources has a distinct purpose. For example, government funding sources are pursued predominantly for program placement in underserved areas, whereas program and development capital will come from other sources, such as a PRI. So what exactly is a program-related investment, or a PRI? A program-related investment is defined by the Internal Revenue Service as meeting the following criteria. One, the primary purpose is to accomplish one or more of the Foundation's exempt purposes. Production of income or appreciation of property is not a significant purpose, and influencing legislation or taking part in political campaigns on behalf of candidates is not a purpose. Currently, most Foundations that use PRIs seek a portfolio level ranging from 1 to 5 percent of their total corpus, though this is changing. In addition, PRI disbursements made by foundations count toward their annual 5% distribution requirement, giving them the opportunity to make repeat social investments without reducing their capital base. So specifically, what is Music Finance Partners 1 LLC? First and foremost, Music Finance Partners qualifies as a program-related investment, or PRI. It's a limited liability company governed and managed by the participating investors. Funds put in the LLC constitute an investment, not a gift or donation. The Children's Music Foundation is the sole investee of funds distributed from the LLC. And lastly, it provides a double bottom line return, one in the form of a financial return, which is easily quantified, and two, the much larger, though not so easily quantified, social return or social impact produced by the Children's Music Foundation through its First Note Music program. The following graphic illustrates the relationship between Music Finance Partners 1, the Children's Music Foundation's First Note program, and the classrooms that the Foundation will serve and ultimately represent the source of repayment to the investors in the LLC. Music Finance Partners has been set up as a Washington State limited liability company and is currently accepting investments under the following terms. The partnership will close once $1 million is reached. The Children's Music Foundation will be able to access funds once $350,000 has been invested. The minimum investment is $50,000. A 5% rate of interest will be earned and distributed quarterly to the LLC partners. The term of the loan is seven years and is secured by the assets of the Children's Music Foundation. Thank you for taking the time to learn a little bit more about Music Finance Partners and why interest in this funding vehicle is growing rapidly. Investing in our children always produces great returns. For more information on how you can participate in this opportunity, please email me directly, rourke at cmfinc.org, or